Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. The other day, I did an unboxing video on the Phobos Knives Legion, manufactured by Bark River. That one was an impulse buy because it was new to me. I didn't really have any fair warning that it was coming out. I just happened to, you know, I get those, those DLT, here's what we got new on Friday emails. And I clicked on it and I'm like, whoa, what is that? So, I looked at it, the stock was depleting rapidly, so I just went ahead and used my PayPal and bought it. Great decision, because this knife, which you'll see in a moment, actually fits in a very uh, unique niche in my knife collection. Uh, it is very different from the other stuff that I got. So here it is, and as you can see from the other day, I have gone ahead and I've treated it with Obanoff's leather oil, which I'm about out, so I got to order some more, and uh, Obanoff's uh, LP, so leather protectant. So it's darkened up a bit from when I first got it. Threw a lanyard on it. So I did. The other video was my unboxing, un, you know, totally surprise unbiased uh, first impressions initial reaction type video this is going to be my first used first impressions uh, haven't done anything with this yet video I haven't tuned the edge so we've got a factory edge I haven't done the dance of the ceramic rod on it yet the only thing I've done is put a, a sliding knot lanyard on it so I can't wait to try this thing out so before we get to that, uh, I've, I already shot a little clip uh, back at my place, which we're going to look at right here after the intro, where I've got this thing in the lineup with a bunch of my other knives. And you're going to see where it, it kind of helps you get a better idea of where this thing is size-wise in comparison to some of the other knives that you already know and are familiar with. But you're going to see something that kind of stands out when it comes to this knife. So if you want to find out more, don't go away. All right, before I head out to the woods, I'm in my sitting here in my living room here and I thought this with this particular knife this part was important because it's kind of a unique well I won't say unique but I mean, that's not the right word but it's it's different there's it's not just another knife like every other one uh, and only when I laid all these different knives which these are all what I would call primary knives uh, you're probably wondering why the JX5 is in there. It's not just gratuitous. It's here for a reason, and I'll show you here in a minute. But I want to give you an idea, size-wise, about where this fits. So if you look here, probably the one that it's closest to in terms of size is, you know, it's pretty close to the Honey Badger. Kind of right in the middle, and when we get down to the smallest one here, the smallest one on this table it, in, in terms of size is going to be the Chesmic. And these all have slightly different spine thicknesses, but this one is right here. It's got one of the thicker spines out of all the different knives here. And what stands out let me sec while I brace this camera. As far as this spine thickness, the only one I have that's got a spine that's about the same thickness is actually the JX5. So my big chopper has got the same spine thickness as this. But it's not, but it goes down pretty quickly with that convex. So this is a very, very stout knife and it is a it is going to be a little bit blade heavy but it's not like uh, uncomfortable blade heavy 
And that's why I've been that's why I've been saying this thing is really kind of I mean I would call this a survival knife. It is just right there in that sweet spot. Now the you know you take the honey badger here, and it's a little bit thicker than the honey badger. Honey badger actually feels lighter. And we've got uh, customized BK7. Let's grab probably one of the other thicker ones would be the Sospeace. You know, the spine's thicker than the Sospeace even. So it has the thickest spine on the table for the normal size knives. I mean, it is on par with the JX5. Matter of fact, I think this thing is just like a fingernail thicker even than the JX5. And you would think that would make it uh, overly heavy, but it really isn't. So I thought that was interesting enough to uh, shoot a quick uh, comparison video on it. Alright, so this is the Phobos Knives Legion. And I'll tell you what, if you're, if you're wearing tactical gloves or mechanics type gloves, then this thing really feels good in the hand. First of all, that jumping's not going to bother you so much. But I really love the freaking handle on this knife. So we're going to just do some of the uh, standard stuff that I normally do with knives. Because what I anticipate is that, as you saw with that nice big stout spine and that full convex, this should be a batoning beast beyond all measure. But first, we must adjust the camera. See, I just anticipate this to just split this like no problem. See the initial impact of the knife, how much it has already split that wood. That's exactly what I expected it to do. This, the, when I looked at that spine and the geometry, I'm like, this thing is just going to blast wood apart. Actually, I have to look around, see if I might be able to find something a little bit bigger, because I'm sure this thing can handle it. I mean, this thing, this thing's a batoning monster. When you got that full convex in it, that thick spine, it's like the thickness of a JX-5. You know it's going to just blast through wood like nobody's business. Wow. Let me see if I can find something a little thicker. I don't know that I, there is anything really thicker around here, but let me look real quick. No, unfortunately... Uh, Without cutting down a live tree, I don't see anything, you know, nearby to do a bigger test. But I mean, just looking at the way that this thing splits wood with the geometry, that's its strength in batoning because it's just pushing that wood apart before it even gets there. It's like a wedge. We know it can do that. Let's see how this thing is finesse-wise. Yeah, that thing is a wood hog.
So with the lanyard, back here, just doing a little two finger grip. I'm securing it down with my sliding See how this works. Get a bite on that. So back here with the lanyard. You can get quite a bit of leverage for chopping in that geometry. I mean, just look what it's doing. You know, for a regular size knife, chopping is usually like, eh, you know, it can kind of chop. I mean, geez, it's freaking putting gouges in there. I'd say this thing is just, look at that. Barely swinging that thing. I've never, <laughs> wow, I, I don't want to say never, but for a knife this size, look at that. Look how effectively it's chopping. Again, this is my, this is my first use. It's not like I had a bunch of time to get, you know, really good with this thing or not. Usually, nine times out of ten, if it's not a chopper knife, you know, like my stuff, like GX5, I'm usually not that impressed with something in terms of being used for chopping. Now, granted, we're talking about if you need to. I always go for a, you know, a chopper, but the geometry and the and the grind and the the forward weighted blade, this thing is a beast when it comes to chopping. I mean, God, look at it. I'm shocked. I'm seriously shocked. I mean, this is like, I'm chopping this thing half to death. Wow. That is, uh, that is really freaking impressive. Now, since I'm kissing its ass right now, let me point out one thing that bugs me. And this is just simply an aesthetic thing because I can see where it actually is symmetrical. You know, this little choil right here, but the way the choil goes to where it dips down to, I don't know, aesthetically, that bugs me a little bit. But performance wise, you know, with this thing as a survival knife so far, I can overlook that. So let me real quick. I'm not even gonna use a baton, I'm just gonna use my hand here. This thing's so freaking effective, you don't even need a baton. Change this around and try feathering with this thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually choke up with this. Wow, super slicey. Wow, wow. Not only is it super choppy, but it is like super slicey. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a good selling knife. So so far, looking at this thing as a survival knife, it batons amazing. 
chops way better than I freaking thought it would. Feathers. This is just like gliding through it like it's nothing. Let me try. I got some fat feathers here. Let me see if I can just, just barely loosen up a little bit. And now I'm getting the fine stuff. This is my first time using it. You know, if I to sound like Captain Rick and Morty. You know, Crystal threw this in my hand said do something with it. Well, that's what I'm doing to myself right now. <laughs> I actually just want to chop at this thing. This thing is crazy. And you can't say it's because oh, you're Bark River sponsor. Look, it's right there. It's on camera. I mean, I knew I was gonna like this knife, but my God, I can't wait for that other one to come out. It's they're building right now, the smaller one. This thing is just fun to freaking use. All right, well, we need to check the spine since we're calling it a survival knife. Where's my ferro rod at? All right, so no, no cheating today. I don't have one of my big rods, so I'm just using, you know, the, the rod that I had on the sheath. So it's just like a off-brand, you know, army, strike my fire, whatever, LMF size ferro rod. Seeing how this spine is. Wow. It's like sharper than I'm used to from Bark River. I mean, right there, with the fair rod, that part right there that I started on didn't have any coating. So I'm gonna hit this part right here with that still has the coating on. I'm gonna give it three, three swipes with this spine. That should give you kind of an idea of what the spine is like. So yeah, it's got a it's got a good sharp spine on this thing. It's just getting points after points after points as a survival knife. Very impressed. say it's a beast of a knife you know the, the the key things that I look for in an outdoors knife you know, survival type knife now with the jumping and stuff like that I look I've never been a fan of aggressive jumping everybody knows that if you don't you do now never been a fan of it but I understand given the designers background and stuff like that with gloves on it's actually very secure Without gloves on, it's like maximum degree of suck if you're trying to do some thumb pushing. But I can overlook that. This thing works so well. Again, I can't believe how well this freaking thing chops. That's what blows my mind. For a standard sized knife, this thing chops crazy crazy Let's take a look at the the edge here now CPM 154 is not as uh, tough as 3v but I mean we're, we're we're basically splitting hairs at this point uh, 
it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit slightly easier to sharpen it's gonna have great edge retention it's gonna be more resistant to rust it's a good you know I I use it on two of my knives so obviously it's a good steel eh. I've got new knife thumb going on so I've had a couple new knives and you know I sit there at night sharpening them and feeling them until I just cut half my freaking thumb off and then I gotta put a band-aid on so I gotta knock that off let my thumb grow back <laughs> but yeah that thing is still absolutely freaking screaming sharp Let's see if I got something to kind of demonstrate the sharpness here test the sharpness of this knife after I've been using it I am going to waste all this paracord so you talk about cord cutting tests well this thing has been exceeding my expectations so much right I mean yeah I mean we could sit here and slice that all day long let's slice this whole thing <laughs> ah, the freaking edge on this thing look at it look at that how easy that's sliced this knife is definitely Jessica listed if anything deserves to be on the Jessica list that's not Jessica, <laughs> it's this thing. Wow. I am so happy I clicked on that DLT freaking email that day. Look at, look at that. Yeah, you think it's sharp? Damn right, it's friggin' sharp. I ain't even touched this freaking knife. Wow. So for my first use uh, initial impressions test, I think I've seen enough. I have been impressed before on the first impressions videos, but seeing is believing. I knew I've been at. I've been just doing videos for over five years not it's not like that was the day I started going out in the woods but so I know from experience and looking at this geometry that this thing was going to be a master at batoning and it is uh, it's splitting the wood you know almost like two knife heights ahead of it ahead of itself that's how effective this is at splitting so it's not doing so much, putting so much pressure on the knife. The knife is just wedging the wood apart. What really shocked me was how well this thing chopped. This, I mean, when you see a knife like this, you don't think chopper. But with the, the shape of the handle, especially if you got gloves on, and you're just doing a little two-finger grip back here, using the... the, the uh, the sliding lanyard because this is a forward weighted knife in that big convex this thing chops like free this thing chops like the freaking vengeful one almost all right I mean, it's not going to get that power but for something this size yeah yeah this thing uh, overperformed in that regard slicing holy crap uh, when I was doing the feathers this thing was just there, there's things that don't totally translate to you know from actually seeing it on the computer to what I'm actually feeling with my hand the way that thing is just gliding through the wood and then uh, you know notching and stuff like that you know being a wood hog just slicing off wood to sharpen a steak and then the way that thing sliced through that big bundle of paracord after it was all done this thing is a solid performer and once again, you gotta consider this thing's coming with a really freaking nice leather sheath. Which I'll probably just keep it in this for a while. But it kinda, I'm on the fence a little bit. Because even though I like this sheath, I mean, four operators, but you know, this is someone with, you know, a military type background. And design influence I'm wondering if I should send this to you know the same type of guy Kydex or Doug Wilson 
this might be first of all he would probably like to see this knife second it just seems like a good match between the two you know the design of this knife you know with you know Doug's style of kydex so I'm gonna have to think about that uh, whether or not to kydex or this or not because I do like the sheath I actually like the sheath a lot I'm pretty surprised to me I saw it and I'm like that's a lot different than what I usually see from Bark River uh, yeah I'm go ahead and get it very surprised I'm not just saying that because they sponsor me or they make my stuff you watched it happen you watched me do this for the first time right here on camera I mean this is very very impressive so I know that the smaller one there's there's a smaller knife model coming uh, Bark River's putting that together now I'm sure I'll get my hands on that when it comes out that that looks like a really great design too so I can't wait for that one two thumbs up Jessica listed without a shadow of a doubt so there you go guys Christian prepared my one oh and I'm sorry because <laughs> if you're not like one of the first people watching this video the stocks almost gone but when things are this popular, they put it back on the production schedule pretty quick. So I don't think you'd have to wait that long. But definitely you'd want to keep your eyes out for that smaller one. So links to this for DLT and Knife Ship Free are going to be in the description box below. So Christian prepared my 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Get it all. If uh, you want to impress the kids in the neighborhood if you want to get you know have better luck on dates you can get the prepare my 101 t-shirt down there help support the channel uh, I've got some other designs uh, in the works so stay tuned for that uh, all the other links to support the channel are down there as well I'll be back with another video here soon so see you then